Hello everyone, my name is Sam Spade and welcome to another Coding Fundamentals in GML tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with part two of arrays. We're going to be discussing array functions, the built-in array functions, uh, nesting arrays and using nested arrays, the array variable, the array accessor, and how arrays copy on write or how that works in GameMaker Studio 2. And we're going to touch briefly on 2D arrays. The built-in GameMaker functions for arrays are a little bit limited, but they're all incredibly useful. So first you have isArray. This simply checks a variable and tells you whether or not it's an array. This can be very useful if you are looping through arrays and trying to figure out whether internal variables are arrays or other data types. We have array create, which we've talked about at length. We have array copy, which will copy all or a portion of an array. This one is a little bit complicated to use. Uh, so if you are going to use it, I would recommend reading the manuals page on it. We have array equals. This will check whether the contents of two arrays are equal, uh, not whether one array is the same array as another. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into the array variable. And then finally, array length 1D. This function checks how long or how many positions or indexes there are in an array. While these array functions are pretty limited, it's very easy to extend what you can do with arrays by writing your own functions or looking on the marketplace. I have a free extension, which I'll link below to a bunch of additional array functions like array sort, array add, array insert, and some variations on array copy, things that will copy nested arrays and so on. And of course, because arrays are so common in programming languages, you can simply find a lot of code for how to work with arrays online. The next thing to talk about is nested arrays or nesting arrays. As we've said multiple times, arrays can hold arrays, which can hold arrays. So then the question is, well, how do you reference or use change, set, get the data from an array that is inside of another array? Unfortunately, at the present moment, you have to pull out the interior array to reference it. If you're coming from another language, GameMaker Studio 2 does not have chained accessors. However, version 2.3 will, so this will be much simpler soon. But for the moment, if you want to access an internal array, you have to pull it out of the main array. So let's say our main array is this array right here. The, the, you can see the open bracket right here, close bracket right here. This array would have two positions, position zero and position one. Position one is a string, but position zero is another array. So if we wanted to access one of these values, the first thing we'd have to do is save that array to another variable. So here, position zero of the main array is an array. So we say main array zero, and we save it to subarray, uh, which I generally do as a local variable, but it doesn't have to be. It could be a global or an instance variable, it depends on what you're doing with it. And now we could reference subarray, like an array, and get or change, set, etc. the variables inside of it. Again, this will change with version 2.3 of GameMaker Studio 2, uh, which will add chained accessors. But now we get to one of the most important things to understand about the array variable. As we said in the data types tutorial, the array is a specific data type in GameMaker Studio 2. The array variable is a reference to where the data is. And most importantly, you can pass that reference around. So we're gonna see, and we're gonna go over some examples of this when we get to the code section, but right here, you can see that array one, we're creating using the array literal form. So this is gonna be an array of zero, one, two. And then we're gonna say array two equals array one. This will not create a copy of this array. In fact, array one and array two will both refer to the same array. That variable is gonna hold a reference or both variables are going to hold a reference to the same array. And this leads us to a very important feature of how GameMaker Studio 2 handles arrays. If there are ever two variables that reference the same array and you modify that array, the array is copied and then changed unless you use the array accessor. The array accessor looks like the at sign. So the use would be array, the variable name, open brackets, then the at sign, then the index you want to reference, and then close brackets. So to see a couple examples here, and we'll also look at these in code, don't worry. Using the code from before, we have array one. This will equal the array zero and one. So an array with two positions, zero and one. We're gonna say array two equals array one. So now both of these variables reference the same array. If we do array one at zero equals hello world, both array one and array two will now point to an array that says hello world comma one. 
However, if we then say array two index one equals goodbye, what will happen is we will first copy the array and then we will change it. So now we will actually, instead of having two variables pointing to the same array, we will have two variables, each pointing to different arrays, where one array is hello world comma one, and the other array is hello world comma goodbye. And again, we'll look at this in code in just a moment. But before we switch over to code, I wanted to talk briefly about 2D arrays. Uh, 2D arrays exist, but I think that they are clunky and worse than a DS grid. I never use them. If I want a grid or a grid-like structure, I use the data structure DS grid. Otherwise, I use arrays or nested arrays. Additionally, uh, version 2.3 of GameMaker Studio 2 is basically going to make them obsolete. Uh, it's not out yet, so I don't exactly know how it will work, but reading the notes, it seems like you'll be able to use the same syntax as before, uh, but all arrays are basically just going to be nested arrays, and so using the syntax for a 2D array will simply be like using chained accessors. So again, I'm not saying don't use these. Uh, I don't have a use for them. If you do use them, uh, array length 2D and array height 2D are additional built-in functions to get the length and height of an array of a 2D array in GameMaker Studio 2. With that, let's switch over to code. So first we're gonna demonstrate what we talked about before, pulling out a nested array. So we have our main array here. We're going to initialize it using the array literals. And note over here, we have main array, and we have two subarrays. One, which is zero, one, two, that's this first section, and one, which is hello world and goodbye, this second section. So now the zero, the first index of the main array is gonna to refer to this right here. We're gonna pull it out and save it the subarray. So now subarray, you can see local variables over here, C79E80. C79E80. Now, if we wanted to, we could reference and use the subarray just like we would every other array. So next, I'm going to demonstrate how both of these variables can point to the same array. All right, so we have array one. Let's close this up. So we have array one, C79E20, and array two, C79. 9 e 20 As you can see, both of these arrays are the same, or both variables hold the same value. They point to the same array. Let's actually look at them here. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. In this first case, we're going to use the accessor, the at sign right here, and we're going to say we're going to change that position, and you should see it change in both arrays. Let's test it. There we go. Hello world. Hello world. It's changed for both of them. Now we're going to change array two without using the accessor. And so here again, C79E20, let's run it. So array one, C79E20, that's the same array. Notice that it says hello world one, two. Whereas now array two says C79DC0. That is a different array and it says hello world, goodbye, and two. So because we changed this array without the accessor, it's copied the array and then changed it, now giving us two arrays. You probably won't do what I'm doing here very often, although sometimes when you're pulling out internal arrays, you will have that happen because up here, notice that the main array has a reference to the array, as does the subarray. So if we were to change anything in the subarray, that might actually copy it, which may or may not be what we want, depending upon the circumstance. But the real reason to do this, or to know about this, I should say, is with scripts because arrays are always passed by reference into scripts. So down here, we have an array of numbers. So we created that already. Let me double check here. Uh, we have not. So we will create our array of numbers. So here we go, array of numbers. We just have zero through seven. Now we're going to pass that array into a script. So again, C9E00, that's the value of this array. Or not the value, that's the reference to this array. We're gonna pass it in, we're gonna go into the script, and now note that we have argument zero. Argument zero is C79E00. So the argument in the array is now another reference to that array. We have the instance variable, array of numbers, and we have argument zero, both of which reference the same array. So if we were to change this array without using the accessor, it would actually copy and then change the array. So note that this function, increment in place, is actually going to change the value of array of numbers directly by using the accessor. So here we go. You can see we're just looping through this array. And over here, you should see these numbers changing. There we go. And you can check over here. Again, the numbers are changing here as well. Because we're using the accessor, we 
we are not copying and changing that array. And that allows us to write a script that will change the value of the array in place. And this can often be very important. Now we're going to do a different version of this script, which is just increment and copy. So here we're passing that same array of numbers into a script. Notice that now we are not using the accessor. So we're going to copy and change this array. To start with, argument 0 is still C79E00, still the same array. But as soon as we do this first line here, C79DEO, it's a different array, and you'll notice these numbers change, these numbers do not. So we're just going to go through, you can see the numbers changing. Again, these numbers changing, these numbers not. And now, of course, it's important that we actually return this new array. Because we've copied the array, we actually have to return it for it to be of any use. So we return, we save new array of numbers, Let's just come down here, new array of numbers. So now C79DE0, that indeed was the same array that was created in the argument, we passed it back, and we've got our first array and our second array. So again, if there's one thing to take away from this tutorial, I would take away how arrays are passed by reference into scripts and the array accessor, and remember how to use it to get the different features, because you might want both or either. In some cases, you might want to change the array in place, and in some cases, you might want to copy and return a new array. So in summary, there are built-in array functions, and you can extend the built-in array functions by writing your own or getting ones from the marketplace. You can deeply nest arrays, and most importantly, the array variable is a reference, and you need to keep in mind the copy on write behavior especially when you're using scripts, because arrays are always going to be passed by reference into a script. As always, the links on this slide will be below, as well as links to the source code and links to the slides themselves. And that's it. Thanks for watching.